Okay. Um, hi, uh, so my name is Ivo from Estonia. And um, for this specific topic, just for intro, I mean, you all know we have Wikipedia for encyclopedic information. There's comments for all sorts of media files. There's Wikidata for that data. There are different projects like uh, Wikibooks or Wikigods and so on. Um, but is it really all that there is? If you look at what kind of information is there, and if you want to make all information available to all persons on Earth. So that's uh, maybe a good thing to think about. So, again, museums. When they set up uh, museum, uh, exhibitions, uh, then they assemble a lot of information. We have all seen that. There's a lot of museums around the world. There's even way more exhibitions. And often when this exhibition is taken down, that information is kind of lost. It's nowhere to be found and just wait 10 more years and probably even a museum does not even have it for most of the museums. But it doesn't have to be like that. This, science, this is still a lot of text, often just text and images. And it's very easily shareable. So and for, for the online world game, I mean, what is also game was uh, virtual exhibitions. So, just moving the same materials to the web. Not something very different. Um, but what Wikimedia here could provide is actually this platform where to make this information permanently available. Permanently for everyone. Not just for until two months when this uh, specific exhibition is up. And it doesn't actually cost us anything. I mean, it's no longer that much different from actually a Wikipedia article. Just, yeah, content is different, but uh, is it really that different? And also what we might want to think about is uh, we ourselves, even with our glam work, for instance, are collecting thousands and thousands and thousands of images, occasionally millions of images per institution. This is one of examples, for instance, Estonian Museum of Natural History. And in this collection we have well over 6,000 images, but where can we actually show them? I mean, if we look into the future and the more the stuff we collect, the less and less possibilities we actually have to show that information. So, but at the same time, it's not that difficult for us to create new ways of showing this. And also, like the stories. Museums often try to tell stories with their exhibitions to sort of explain something in sort of more human-friendly way than maybe Wikipedia tries. Because Wikipedia is very much on those facts. But again, these facts could also be presented as stories. And this all aligns very well with our own vision and mission. So, again, there is no conflict there. We can actually do it. And if you look at Wikipedia, again, articles. That's like what uh, one average article might look like. And then there could be this Wiki Museum, when we have, instead of articles, we have those virtual exhibitions that are kind of like the same thing, it, but it allows people to access new kinds of information. This, for instance, here is a uh, uh, virtual exhibition about uh, Polish Estonian relationships, and we have it in three languages. What sorts of things is possible, and even with there, I mean, one way is, for instance, for museums, for instance, they have collected a lot of stuff. Some of it ends up in exhibition, some of it does not, and most of it gets lost later. So yeah, we can solve that problem for museums, but at the same time, we could also make totally new content, right? This specific example that's created from scratch, it does not, it's not based on some existing exhibition. And so we already have the MediaWiki software, and there is a lot of content that we have, a lot of content that we can actually share, make uh, more readily available. And then you might ask, like, okay, like, could it work? Because like, this is 
this example here provides a lot of this uh, same situation that we actually already had those virtual exhibitions. Like in Estonia, we've tried this thing. Uh, first one was already 2017. As a moment, uh, we have actually 12 of those examples. I try, I'm trying to find a different type versions of what kind of different types of exhibitions there could be so that should show the diversity, to have this showcase of what actually is possible, how they would look like. And there, again, what we only need is to basically set up this new project. Because what can be actually a bigger uh, clam project than our own, our own museum? And that is what we could do. We already have the software, we have the servers, we just only need to do it. That's it. <laughs> Any questions? I see it's more like a gallery, like a museum, right? So showing pictures with some short description, this is time, right? Yeah, but, uh, this is one of the options, uh, because I mean, this also allows us for maybe more ways to engage with museums and also get us more maybe this visual content into commons. Because again, this is the only way we can put it up into those virtual exhibitions. Uh, but in there, I mean, yeah, we are trying to do different things for, let's say, more text-centric, uh, more visual. Uh, so, uh, like, we are trying different options. But uh, in one way, it's like sort of uh, one sort of gallery, yeah, is one of the options there, and that's one of the more popular ones. Uh, but came into my mind is European galleries, uh, yeah. these, uh, these, uh, pictures and descriptions and you can go through a topic, systematical galleries are the exhibitions. So, uh, yes, take it. Just, just comment that uh, in Qatar, the format that the museum people say that when the exhibition goes down, the catalog stays, there's you know, many kinds of catalogs, they're usually published in public book formats, printed format, but there used to be a period of they try to uh, replace it in CDs and nowadays of course in internet. So uh, say what's well, what's your relationship with this traditional museum catalogs? Uh, we, actually, we have had like uh, connections to many museums in Estonia and even like if it's like in what is it, historic information there. Uh, some uh, materials about some exhibitions is indeed even in Estonia published in books. Well, some is not, and uh, they're like even like, different museums have different exhibitions. There are like permanent ones. There are like some exhibitions that are up maybe for two weeks. So yeah, this is like just one of opportunity for museums to actually store their materials so that it's also accessible to museum staff themselves, and they don't need to figure out who was the employee uh, who worked here like five years ago, and because like this exhibition we had like ten years ago, uh, like who knows where we had these materials. Because yeah, that's the issue there, even. There's what, museums do have these materials often, but again, they got lost over time. So, yeah. I have a question. Uh, how is it for you uh, to, when you are approaching the institution, uh, to start also since, um, I see the differences, but from the institutional perspective, and when I'm thinking of uh, the example, for example, forms, the German site is, of course, but, uh, among the institutions, the uh, most popular way to showcase uh, not on their own form their uh, exhibitions with the Google Culture, um, Google uh, Artists and Cultures program. So, do you face some challenges about it? Uh, I don't. Uh, I haven't had any problems with uh, museums with specifically that, but I will have problems with uh, setting a lot of these materials to Google and not uh, making sure that it's all freely available. Uh, I think that's maybe a bigger problem that we could tackle, so that may help us to provide alternative, alternatives to this. Not saying that Google is bad, but it's just that we should have more versions or more possibilities to show this stuff. And just also a bit later, I'm going to talk about Wikipedia Art Month. So, st stay here.